Well, you know, patrolling the Mojave almost makes me wish for a nuclear winter. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes me wish for a nuclear winter. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes me wish for a nuclear winter. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes me wish for a nuclear winter. <laughs> I'm talking about Fallout today. I'm talking about Fallout New Vegas. I am going back. We're going back to Fallout. A few of you really, really enjoyed uh, my Stimpak cocktail, and there's a link down there right beneath here in a pinned comment. And in that video, I mentioned that if I come back to Fallout, maybe we would do a Sierra Madre Martini. Well, my time has come. We are doing it today. We're making a Sierra Madre Martini. You know, patrolling the Mojave makes you wish for a nuclear winter. <laughs> so the dead money expansion for Fallout New Vegas. Okay, so look, here's the thing. This is a pretty divisive expansion. I loved it. It's probably my favorite expansion for New Vegas. I know a lot of people really like uh, Old World Blues, um, the one with the science lab. I just thought that one was kind of silly. I didn't really like all the scientists. I don't know. To me, it actually missed the tone of Fallout. Dead Money felt a lot like uh, Fallout 1 and 2 in a lot of ways, just so bleak. You get suckered in to going to this uh, abandoned casino uh, that opened at its grand opening gala, the night the bombs fell, some like 200 or 150 years ago or whatever. The hyper advanced science fiction-y casino, um, the, what do you call that, uh, security system of deadly holograms and robots sprang to life, uh, eradicated all the people who were visiting the casino, locked it down, and it's been locked down ever since. Um, and uh, there's a couple of people still alive in there, and uh, one of them, wants to get the gold and so you get roped into his very elaborate heist it's one of those expansions where like you lose all your gear and they strap an explosive collar around your neck so if you try to like abandon the expansion you can't and uh there's a deadly toxic cloud that's just like constantly debuffing you and hurting you it's just like super punishing difficulty i loved it i thought it was great you meet a ghoul there who's been there since the bombs fell dean domino uh lounge singer the sierra madre Beauty, isn't she? He teaches you how to make something called the Sierra Madre Martini, which is a recipe he's perfected over like the last 150, 200 years, whatever. Once I, well, realized what you could scrounge up around here, I had a lot of time to experiment. And he makes it using some unusual ingredients. Here's the mix, if you can stomach it. You're gonna need uh, some toxic cloud residue. This is the disgusting, deadly cloud that seems to permeate the entire place, collected in a jar. You're gonna need some junk food. Uh, in the game, it is uh, always pictured to be a box of potato chips, and you're gonna need a tin can. I call it a Sierra Madre Martini. Uh, curiously, there's, there's no liquor in that, so we're gonna provide our own today. It's a pretty important item in the expansion because it gives you a lot of buffs in the game. Um, I don't think uh, the version I'm going to make today will increase your strength or perception attributes um, or anything like that. I think it will probably just increase your inebriation attribute, um, but that's fine. That's kind of what we're going for here. Uh, this version also will probably increase your cholesterol attribute, so uh, I guess that's something to be concerned about a little bit. And so to make it, you're going to need some things you probably don't need to make any other cocktails. You're going to need some genuine junk food. We're going to use some potato chips. You're going to need some granulated sugar. Okay, pretty basic. I'm gonna serve it in a tin can, you don't have to. Oh, this, you're gonna need a cotton candy machine. So this is a uh, cotton candy machine uh, you can buy on Amazon and there's a link below in a pinned comment. Uh, I picked out the cheapest one I could get for you. I, I wanted to get like an industrial, like a commercial grade one for like 200 bucks or whatever because it would look more like official for the show. But this one's like 35 bucks. And uh, as an added bonus, it can do either floss sugar or hard candies. You can just melt hard candies right down in there and make whatever you want. Our cotton candy is going to be our toxic cloud. Uh, and I'm pretty gosh darn pleased with myself on this one, actually. <laughs> We're gonna take some sugar. It really doesn't matter how much. Just, you know, not too much, because we don't need a lot of this stuff. And some absinthe. And I'm using Le Mousse Verte. Uh, this is a bit fancier than you actually need. Um, and in truth, really, this is a bit fancier than kind of be anything you like the taste of, but I think absinthe is super appropriate uh, given our setting. And we're gonna mix them together and you see we've got our green absinthe sugar and actually see that right there? That's a little, I kind of think that'll work, 
but that's probably actually uh, the wrong consistency, right? To be ideal, we probably want to dry that out a little bit with some more sugar, like that, or maybe a little bit more absinthe than that, but I think that's fine. If you don't, it smells like absinthe, it smells very strongly of absinthe, okay? So if you look online and search, you'll find a few blog posts and recipes for how to make alcoholic cotton candy. And it'll involve mixing some vodka and some sugar and letting it dry. There's a funny thing about that, right? It, it, it takes a stupid amount of time to dry, but it's like, I don't think it's like polymerizing or anything like that. The only thing it can really be doing to dry is evaporating. So if it's dried, I don't think there's any alcohol left in it. I think you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. And anyway, there's a big strong heat source here though, so I actually don't know how much of the alcohol will be left anyway. I did it with Everclear, um, just to try a version that would have the highest amount of alcohol in it to see if I could really make an alcoholic cotton candy. I ate a whole bunch of it. I didn't feel, you know, my mouth didn't go numb. I didn't feel anything. I'm 90% sure that all the alcohol that is in there won't survive the heating element here. I'm not a scientist. I can't say for sure. It just seems pretty logical. That doesn't matter though because using something that tastes really strong, like an absinthe, we're gonna end up with absinthe flavored cotton candy. Add about a tablespoon of our stuff to the center part. Pop her on. And we wait for the fun to start. Is it working? Come on, make me some cotton candy. It takes a while. Oh, here we go. Starting to see some webbing. Oh, it's floating right up to the ceiling. <laughs> now the gypsy moth weaves its cocoon. Soon all the trees in this valley will die because of this invasive species. This will be the most like disappointing and very slow moving carnival. <laughs> Any minute now, kids, shut up. I don't get paid enough to listen to you. Okay, so there is our, tastes like absinthe, it's awesome. That is our cloud residue collected on a, uh, our drinking straw. So we're gonna set that aside because we don't need that just yet. This rest of this drink is uh, even weirder, if you can believe it. We need um, a half an ounce of simple syrup, two ounces of vodka, and potato chips. That's right, just put them right in there. Not too many potato chips, you know, like five, five potato chips. These are just basic Utz potato chips. Nothing fancy about them. Now we shake it with ice. My ice cubes are stuck together. I wonder what I can use. How about my Farfly ice knife? Oh, it works so good. What a wonderful thing to have a Barfly ice knife. Hey, all the barware that I've been using is furnished by Barfly. If you want to use the bar tools I'm using, there's a link in the pinned comment below. Uh, let's drop a whole cube in and uh, we'll crack the next one. Cracky, cracky. Now we shake. I'm gonna crack uh, some ice into my can. Nothing too serious, I just, you know, want some cracked up cubes in there. Now, why would I not just free pour this? Well, there's a lot of um, potato chip in here and we wanna strain that out at this point. So let's just double strain. There'll be a link to the tin can I'm using in the pinned comment below. All right, our drink is poured. We're gonna garnish with, and make it a straw, our cloud residue. And there we have a Sierra Madre Martini. Looks so good. I'll take a sip now. That tastes like potato chips. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. It's a potato chip martini, guys. Mm. And then with an absinthe, mm, this is cool. Ooh, that's fun. We've invented the potato chip martini. My Sierra Madre martini. 
Um, it, it just tastes like potato chips uh, with this absinthe cloud on the side. It, um, and what does absinthe taste like? A little, little bit of licorice, it's light. The absinthe is mostly, it's very, very diluted by putting it through the machine. So it's not like a smack you in the face kind of absinthe no, flavor, it's, it's pretty mild. You, uh, I don't taste the vodka at all. I, I taste the potato chips um, and, and the sweetness. So I added um, on this, I've made this like a couple of times in prep for the show. So, you know, the recipes are always in flux. This is a little overly sweet. You need some sweetness to bring the flavor of the potato chips out. It just doesn't, without it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, it's just too dry. Uh, the salt, it just becomes, I don't know, it doesn't taste like potato chips, it tastes like salt. When you throw a little bit of sugar in there, somehow that plus the alcohol makes the whole thing taste like you're eating potato chips. It's kind of insane. So, you know, I suppose if I was a ghoul, uh, an intelligent zombie living in, uh, I'd probably, yep, I'd drink these all the time. You don't have to serve it out of a tin can, but, I mean, why not? Won't underlight, huh? Really defeats the purpose of the old, uh, the whole rig here. What's your favorite expansion on New Vegas is a good question. I, I really, I go back to Dead Money again and again. I mean, I haven't played in a while, but I love Dead Money. I haven't played Fallout 4 yet, so I have no opinion on that. Although a lot of you have requested a Dirty Wastelander, so that's something that we could definitely look into. If this episode gets one million views, what else can I say about uh, the game? Uh, Fallout is uh, dead. Fallout is dead. Bethesda killed it. They murdered it. No, that's not true. A lot of people seem to like, I mean, I get a lot of comments that Fallout 4 is cool. I just don't think it's the kind of game that I'm into. I don't think, I don't think it's my jam anymore, to be honest. This is How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them. I'm on Twitter at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. I am on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. What other video games should I be making cocktails from? Shoot them at me. Um, I don't play a lot of video games. Will you mind if I make a cocktail from a video game that I don't know anything about? Will that be good or bad? Let me know. Pull it. Find out. You decide. It gets hard. Okay, so the cotton candy, when it gets wet, it gets really hard and dense and kind of... It's now stuck to my teeth. That's showbiz.